Hi. Here we are in the simulation center, and Megan, one of our course instructors, is going to demonstrate to us the relationship between some basic heart anatomy and what clinicians listen for in um, physical examinations. Thank you so much for being here today. It's always exciting to talk about the heart. What we're going to cover today is just a review of the anatomy that Dr. Skanga has already gone over with you uh, about the heart's position and the chest cavity. Then we're going to learn about assessing the heart rate and we're also going to talk about um, auscultating heart sounds. Megan, can you clarify for everyone what auscultating or auscultation means? Auscultation is just a clinical term that we use to refer to listening to the internal sounds of the body, typically with a stethoscope. And we just think it's important to use those technical clinical terms. And also, um, what you hear with your own ear listening to the body is very different than what you hear when you use a stethoscope. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So first, let's talk about just where the heart is positioned in the chest cavity. Um, as you should remember, the heart is uh, just deep to the sternum and positioned slightly to the left of the midline. So about two-thirds of the heart is here to the left of the midline. And um, in terms of where the heart is in there, um, we like to think about the ribs. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five. And it's important to know that the apex, or this pointy tip of the heart, is located just about between the fifth and the sixth ribs. So it would be something about like this. Also, the apex um, is tilted a little towards the anterior portion of the chest cavity. So anterior just means um, the front portion of the chest. And sometimes that rests right against the chest wall and kind of on the diaphragm. So when we um, are listening uh, with a stethoscope on the chest, um, one thing that we're uh, using to assess the heart rate um, is the point of maximal impulse. And that's where that apex is resting against the anterior chest wall. And that's the most accurate place to check the heart rate. Yeah? Now why would you want to listen to it rather than just feel it? That's a good question. Um, Palpating it, you're able to count the heart rate, which we usually um, talk about in terms of how many beats there are per minute. But when you auscultate, you're also able to listen um, to other things at the same time in addition to just the heart rate. So you can listen um, to the heart sounds. You mentioned the word palpating. What does that mean? Palpate just means to feel. So you can feel the heart rate at that point of maximal impulse. Megan, did you want to listen to one of the students' hearts? Could you demonstrate on one of them? That'd be great. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to listen um, at the point of maximal impulse. That's that spot between the fifth and sixth rib that you mentioned? Correct. Okay. It sounds like your heart rate's just about 75 beats per minute. And when I'm listening, I'm also able to hear the basic heart sounds. So by that, I mean S1 and S2. Do you remember what those are? I think I do. OK. So S1 is when the AV valves close, and then S2 is when the semilunar valves close. Correct. So um, S1 makes the sound, uh, the lub sound, and S2 is the dup sound that you should remember learning about uh, with Dr. Skanga. Mm, sometimes when I'm lying down on my left side, I feel like a pulse on my uh, um, chest wall. Is that what the maximal impulse is? Yeah, sometimes just if you're on your in the left lying position, you can actually feel um, the heart against your chest wall. So the other thing that um, why it's good to listen and not just to feel uh, for the heart rate at the point of maximal impulse is in addition to the basic S1 and S2, if somebody had abnormal heart sounds, you would be able to hear that. And so in addition to listening in that one spot, a lot of times clinicians will listen in multiple locations. 
And again, that just brings us back to why it's so important to understand how the heart is positioned in the body. If you remember learning about the heart valves, <clears throat> hopefully, um, you'll know that the aortic valve then, if it's positioned like this in the chest, would be right about here um, towards the top portion of the chest and just to the right of the sternum. The um, pulmonic valve would be just to the left of the sternum and again at the top of the chest. The tricuspid valve would be uh, lower down um, on the chest wall to the right of the sternum and the mitral valve would be lower down on the chest wall and to the left of the sternum. So knowing that, um, we're able to listen um, to somebody's heart and isolate what's going on in different locations. So if somebody was having a problem with one of those particular valves, as you listened, it would be um, easier to hear it in, in those certain locations as I discussed. Megan, I actually have a mild problem with my mitral valve. Should we see if the students can hear it? I think that's a great idea. Here, switch over to Stacey. Sure. Would That'd be great. So you go ahead and listen and, and tell me if you hear anything. Okay. Mitral, right? Yeah. I think I hear it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there's definitely a murmur. Yeah. It can take a little practice, so if you're not sure at what you're hearing the first time, that's normal. Well, we have the rest of the lab to practice. That's <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> and <clears throat> the other thing to know is that different valves, uh, different type of valve problems would have different sounds, and so you can listen for that as well. So a valve that doesn't close all the way might make a swishing sound or a shh, whereas a valve that has a, doesn't open all the way might make more of a clicking sound, like <laughs> A little hard to demonstrate, but as you listen, try to also not just listen to see if it sounds different from S1 and S2, but if you can kind of tell what type of abnormal sound you're hearing. Great. Thank you so much, Megan. Thanks We're for being We're going to be here. back in a little while to see more demos.